So have you been on the fence about owning or renting? Um, I want to show you a simple graph that can help you decide. And, and this, is, this is the way it goes. I have this graph here. And on this one, I'm going to call this our payments, whether it's rent or mortgage. And on this side here, I'm going to call this time. We're going to measure time in years. What we've seen in rent graphs is that every year, rent pretty much goes up. There are a few exceptions, but most years, it goes up, it wiggles a little bit, and it keeps going up. And so over a 30-year span, rents have literally quadrupled in the payments. I even have witnessed this here in Utah where, um, you know, 10 years ago you could find something as cheap as 500, and now the cheapest you can find is $900. That's a huge increase in price in just 10 years. But it does highlight the fact that in real estate, prices go up. And as prices go up, rents go up. They, they correlate with those two. So one of the biggest things that, that really compelled me to buy was, was this line here. Let's say in history, we go back and at this point in our rent history, we were renting up to this point and then we decided to buy. What happens is this, you go flat. Your payment stops going up. And that's the beauty of a, a fixed rate loan. And let's say it goes out for 30 years and your payment hasn't increased at all. So let me give, let's give a scenario. We have a guy, a friend, we'll call him friend A, and that's a renter, and friend B buys, okay? So our buyer here decided to buy and he's paying $1,500 a month. And let's say our renter was renting a similar place for the same price. What we're seeing is that every 15 years, our prices and rent are doubling because it's also correlating with our price in housing. Our housing doubles in price, and that's again pushing up the rents. So let's say this guy, uh, I didn't do any of these numbers, but it's just trying to prove a point uh, of, of the value of owning. If he bought something for 250,000, he's, he's paying $1,500, What's really compelling is that uh, in 15 years, he's still paying $1,500. And what's his house worth though? Wait a minute, it's not 250,000, it's 500,000. And then in 30 years, we have another doubling, but it's not in his payment. Wait a minute, his payment's not $1,500. In fact, in 30 years, what has he done? He's paid off his mortgage, and his payment goes down to zero, but yet his house has another doubling. Now, this second doubling is where it gets really interesting because we're not doubling from $250,000, we're doubling from $500,000. So he is, his house is now worth $1 million, which is pretty crazy, and he has no payment on it. But friend A, let's say friend A never managed to figure out this and, and the advantages of owning. So in 15 years, his rent is now $3,000. And his, in 30 years, let's say it goes now to $6,000. Now, if you think these numbers sound a little crazy, they, they can sound exaggerated until you talk to your grandma. Go ask your grandma what she bought her first house for, you know? I think mine said, mine was a long time ago, but she said it was like $6,000. Like, what? You know, uh, I, I, my mother-in-law bought her house in California for $78,000 30 years ago, and now it's worth $700, some odd thousand dollars. So houses really appreciate. And if you don't believe it, just ask people that are older and that have been in it for a while what they pay for their house. And you can see that this is coming true. Unfortunately, people's income is not in the pace with our current appreciation of houses. Uh, in fact, Utah is outpacing inflation. So, you know, the government says inflation or everybody should have a 3% adjustment every year, but that's not true. Incomes haven't been going up anywhere close to 3%. And yet housing in Utah has been going up 4 to 5% annually on average for the last 30 years. So that means our area over time is now getting more and more expensive. So if renter A 
never bought, chances are somewhere between this 15 and 30 years, if he's still working, or especially if he retired, that person wouldn't be able to live in this area anymore. They'd have to move somewhere else much, much cheaper. But our buyer B, because they locked it in, doesn't have to move. They're locked in and over 30 years, they own the place. Now, um, this is why we buy. And there's an interesting stat that shows 90% of people who are millionaires made their wealth in real estate. So they became millionaires because of real estate. Not, not, they just didn't acquire real estate after they became millionaires. Real estate makes people wealthy. Why? Because it works for you. It works while you're at work. So you, you buy a house and it's, it's appreciating in value each year. And you, you were going to make this payment anyways, but it now, it now secures your future and makes it so that you can continue um, to make money, like, so to speak, on the side. And it will typically be equivalent to another 401k for you. But I, this, is, this is what I want to propose to you is that what if instead of one house, though, you had two homes? So at the end of uh, while you're looking to retire, you didn't have a million but you ended up having two million dollar properties. And now you, now you have a net worth of two million and you're pulling in, and let's say, let's say, for example, one of these was a rental property. So it's paid for and you're making $6,000 a month in rent. That's, that's a pretty good deal. So why stop there? Because for many people, let's get 10 properties. And now you have $10 million working from you. And let's say you rented them all out and now you're making $60,000 per month. And this, this may sound totally crazy, but it's exactly what happens. And for those who own real estate over time, they're just very wealthy people and their wealth exceeds that of the normal population. And let me, let me demonstrate why in, in this one fact. Um, many people look at other options to buy as, as a, instead of real estate, but um, let's, let's use this $250,000. Um, if you wanted to invest in stocks, if you wanted to buy $250,000, you have to buy $250,000. You literally have to have all of that money. But in real estate, we have something called the power of leverage. So this, let's let this line represent the value of the house. So this is this would be the 100% of the house. The fact is is that when most people buy, if it's if it's uh, for themselves, they're probably you know putting 3% or so down on the house on many owner occupied, and for investments it could be 20%. Either way, you've you've leveraged the house, and so. In this scenario, let's see, what's 20%? That's 40,000. Um, oh, I should have done the numbers before that. <laughs> the two, four, four. Oh, that's 50. That's what I should have known that, <laughs> right? Okay, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, okay, so you let's say you're going to put 20% down, and um, this is $50,000. When you buy a $250,000 house, you really only put at most, typically in residential, 20% down. So you've leveraged $200,000 uh, of this price where you've only really put this in. The, the crazy thing though is when, you, when the house appreciates, you earn money on the whole thing not just the 20% that you actually bought. You technically own the whole thing. And what, the way it works is that, yes, you got, a, you got a loan for this, but we have something called a renter. And that renter pays the cost of getting that loan. In fact, we, we can show that that renter actually makes you money each year. And so, and in this example, if your friend became your renter, over time, 
your rent is going to keep going up. And so over time, that difference becomes greater and greater. And, and that's what we call cash flow. You get a ton of cash flow on a rental property. But there's something even better, which is the appreciation. You know, if this, um, if this house were to appreciate, let's say, 5%, then that's 12500 is that right? $500 um, of appreciation. And so some people look at that and will say, I'm making a higher percent return on my stocks. And I'm saying, really? Wait a minute. Let's look at this. How much did you invest to buy this? You said you invested 50000 where now we have um, 12500 What I want to say is that's ironically not a 5% return on your, your investment. That's, that's actually a 25% return on your investment. Because really, you, you only invested 50000 So when you look at what you're getting, you're earning a, a very, very good return on investment. In fact, really higher than you can get almost anywhere. So the two things that are in play is one is your, your, if you're a landlord, your rents go up almost annually. Um, and the, over time, that separation between your payment and the rent coming in is going to get larger and larger. So the cash flow will get bigger and it typically doubles every 15 years. And then if you're, and it doubles because property values are going up and it costs more to build. And so these things together combined, which makes for your earning two types of income, appreciation and cash flow. And those only get better over time. And the longer you hold these properties and the more real estate you have, the bigger those numbers. And that's how people make millions in real estate. It's very simple. So what we're going to do for you is we're going to have a real estate seminar. Our goal is to help you create wealth uh, in real estate by developing a real estate portfolio. And many people don't understand how this is done, don't, don't know how much value it really is compared to, let's say, stocks. But I think there's a reason that 90% of the millionaires out there have developed it through real estate, not through stocks. Um, so what we're going to do is, is share a couple of secrets with you. And one is uh, a simple secret on how everybody can get started. You know, whether you're rich or you're, you're starting out as a first time buyer, everybody can get started in real estate. And what we'll share with you is the harder decisions, which is what is the best locations and what should I start with as far as uh, what we call a product, whether should I start with a condo, a fourplex, uh, an apartment building, what's the best thing to buy? And we'll review those, those numbers with you. Now, um, the other thing and the other secret we're going to teach you is about financing. We're going to teach you the best financing strategies so that you can make sure you get the, the best, not only the best house and the best location, but with the proper financing so that you can have the best payments. And the, the third thing which people struggle with with rentals is management. So uh, you have to deal with renters and some people don't know how to do that. So we're going to reveal, reveal to you how we attract the best renters so that you always get paid and they stay in there for a long time. So with these strategies, we're going to keep um, showing you at our investment seminar how to create wealth through real estate. Uh, anyone can do it. And we just need to have you sign below, get started so that we can, uh, we, you can come here and we can teach you all of our tips and tricks as professionals in the business. Thanks.